Since we don't want to get caught, we plan ahead, are we crazy or what? We plan ahead, are we crazy or what? Hi, I'm Bill with Self Reliant School, and today I want to take a few minutes to show you how to clean your Instant Pot. Now, that might seem kind of silly, after all, all you gotta do is take the lid off, pull your gasket out, wipe the lid down, clean the inner pot, maybe wipe the rim down, and you're finished, right? Well, not exactly. Now, if you've ever looked down inside your Instant Pot, you've got the heating element, and you can actually reach your fingers down under there. Now, if you're careful, when you've got your main pot in there, if you don't slosh anything over, then you might never get anything down there. But occasionally, you'll get some food stuck down underneath here. You can kind of get your fingers down under and you know maybe stick a cleaning rag down there, but it goes way back. I've got my fingers pushed all the way down in here and I can't feel an end to it. So if something were to slide down in there, who knows whether I'd actually be able to get it out or not. But you can actually remove this heating plate and scrub down under there really well. Now let me say before you start that, um, you are going to be disassembling your Instant Pot. So it's possible you could void your warranty if you don't put it back together properly. So before you get started also, unplug it. Never work on it with it, with it plugged in and make sure that it's cool to the touch. So to do this, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a pair of pliers. Uh, you can either use just a plain old pair of spring-loaded pliers like this or it might be a little bit easier with a pair of these locking pliers and you'll see why in just a minute. And you'll also want either your cell phone or a camera. And again, you'll see why here in just a second. So our first step is going to be to flip the Instant Pot over and we're going to dis disassemble it from the bottom. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is remove this plastic cover on the back. And it's just held in by this one little screw here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this screw out. Set that to the side. And then this just twists a little bit to the uh, counterclockwise and then lifts right off. Now this is where you want to use your phone. I'm going to go ahead and just take a picture of all of the insides here because we're going to be disconnecting some of these wires. And if you have a photograph of what you've disconnected, it's going to make it a little easier for you to remember what goes where. You don't want to be switching your plus and your minus wires or anything like that. So I will just take a quick picture of that. And we're ready to go. Now we're going to be removing these two wires here. This red one and this blue one, we're going to remove a screw that's down inside of this big white plastic piece. We're going to disconnect this white wire here, and then there are two more nuts down in here that actually hold that heating plate in. So let's go ahead and remove our electrical cables first. So I'm going to remove this blue wire right here by unscrewing this screw and then I'll set the screw to the side and move these wires out of the way. Next I'm going to do the same thing with this red wire. I'll set this red wire off to the side. Next I'm going to remove this screw here. It's actually one of the screws that's holding that heating element on. Now this guy can be relatively tight, so you're going to have to kind of push down, give it a little bit of force, and then you will just unscrew that. And if you have a magnetic screwdriver, it should just come right up. Next, I'm going to remove this white wire here. This is actually going down through the base and connecting to that little spring-loaded piece that you see inside, the little pressure sensor. 
So all you have to do here, it's clipped on to the circuit board right here. Just grab it as close as you can to the plastic, wiggle it very gently, and it'll pop right off. Now finally, we've got these two nuts right here. And there are what, they are what's actually holding the heating element in place. Now if you've got a wrench, you might be able to get in there, but as you can see, we're coming in at kind of an angle, so it might be hard to, to get a wrench in there. That's why I like using these uh, locking pliers. I can just put that on and then loosen them up. So what you're going to want to do is to loosen both of these up, but don't take them all the way off. Because if you, as soon as you take both of these all the way off, the um, heating element would just drop right out of the Instant Pot. So we're going to loosen them and then we're going to hold from the other side. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I'm going to hold these wires out of the way so that you can see. I'm going to go in here with my locking pliers and just grab this nut. It's going to be a little stiff at first, so you just kind of have to break it loose and then spin it. Eventually you'll get it loose enough to where you can just put your finger in there and kind of spin it. Go ahead and loosen it until it's all the way up at the top of the bolt, but don't take it farther than that. Like I said, we don't want the heating plate to come crashing down. So now let me do the same thing on this other side. That guy is now loose. And I can go ahead and loosen that all the way. Now, if I flip this back over, you should be able to see that this plate is now pretty loose in there. And that's what I meant when I said if you unscrewed those, it would probably just drop right out, smash on your counter. So instead, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna hold my hand on this plate and I'm gonna reach in and unscrew first one side and then the other. Now you've got both a nut and a washer on here. So you want to make sure that you don't leave the washer behind and it gets lost somewhere inside of your Instant Pot. So I'm going to make sure to grab both of the washers. Okay, now this may or may not just pop right out. If I let it go, as you can see here, it's caught on these little rubber gasket pieces where the power supply was plugged in. So all I have to do is just kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle, push these down through there. And the plate is now out. So let's take a look on the inside. Now, as you can see here, we can take out the little spring-loaded piece and we can clean that very easily. And now you can get to this entire base. And as you can see, it's all open down here. So it's, if anything falls, it's relatively easy for it to get way down into this area where there's no way you'd be able to reach it with a rag. So, We'll go ahead and clean this, and let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, I've cleaned the inside of my Instant Pot. Everything's ready to go back together. The first step will be to take our little uh, spring-loaded switch, feed the wire down through this center hole, and then make sure that it's nicely centered with the spring uh, over the hole. And you also want to make sure that these two little grooves line up with the groove in the Instant Pot below it. Next, our heating element goes back in. You're gonna to wanna to line up these two power supply connectors with these two holes, these two oval holes in your Instant Pot. Um, we're just gonna get it relatively close right now and then we'll flip it over and get it right in place. So, we'll get this guy lined back up. And then with the two electrical plugs lined up, 
you'll need to wiggle the heating plate just a little bit to get the two bolts to slide through the small holes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over so I can work those two little rubber pieces through. I'm holding the uh, heating element so it doesn't fall through. And I'm just gonna look from this side, make sure everything's lined up and push. And everything goes through. Now, I've still got my hand under here because it would want to fall. So what I want to do at this point is to get is to get both of my washers on. And then once I just get once I get these nuts started, I can take my hand out from the inside of the instant pot. There we go. Now before I tighten up both of these nuts, I've got one more screw, the screw that we took out from right here. That has to go all the way through this piece, through the bottom of the pot itself, and into a screw hole that's on the other side of the heating element. So everything's got to line up perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I've got just a little wooden skewer here, and I'm just going to poke that down and wiggle it just to line up all of the holes correctly so that when I drop that screw in, it should just go straight in through every, every hole that I need it to go through. So I'll just carefully remove that and I'm gonna go ahead and put my little screw in there. Now this is a pretty little screw and that's a pretty small area to try and get it in if you're just using your fingers. So what you want to do is use a magnetic screwdriver. Now if your screwdriver is not magnetic like this, one of the things that you can do is just take any kind of magnet. This is just a little um, magnet for whiteboards. Just touch it to the end of the screwdriver and then it becomes magnetic. So now I can carefully line that up. Once it's lined up, I can go ahead and move the magnet a little bit and then I just start screwing that in. You want to do it very gently to make sure that it's catching. You don't want to strip out any of uh, any of the, the screw threads. So once it's in there, just do it a little bit tight. Then we're going to go ahead and tighten up uh, these two nuts to pull the plate in. We'll tighten up that screw and we'll hook up all of the wires. So I'm just going to take my pliers, go ahead and tighten these. Now you want to tighten a little bit on this side, and then a little bit on this side, then a little more over here, and a little more over here, so that you're bringing the plate up evenly. If you tighten too much on one side, it could go slanted, you might wind up stripping a screw hole or something. So I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening. And now finally I'm going to go ahead and tighten this screw here. Now we're going to go ahead and connect this cable back to the circuit board. Uh, you'll notice that there is a notch on one end of the cable, so there's really only one way that it can fit in. You don't need to worry about getting it in backwards. And that will just click into place there. Now we're going to go ahead and reconnect our power cables. Now on this one, blue was over here, red was over here, and on all of our Instant Pots it's always been that way. But just to be on the safe side, take a look at the picture that you took, just in case yours is wired differently. So I'm going to grab one of my small screws with a magnetic screwdriver, and I just hold the red cable right in there and twist this into place.
And then on the blue side, we actually have two cables that we're going to do the same thing to. So I'm going to go ahead and run my screw through here first, just to make it a little bit easier. Then I take my screwdriver, line it up, and tighten it down. Now before we put the plastic piece on the back and seal everything up, just flip it back over, take a look at your little spring-loaded switch here. Just make sure that it still moves freely, that when you're putting this back into place, it didn't jam somehow. Now finally, we're gonna go ahead and cover up the back here. So I'll just take my little plastic piece, line it back up, give it a twist. My screw holes right here should line up. Then I'll just take the screw and tighten it back up. And that's it. Hopefully you won't have to disassemble your Instant Pot very often to clean it, but should the need come, it's only about a five minute process to disassemble it, clean it, and reassemble it. Take care and I'll see you next time.